it must be not very long, right? <laughs> you have not a long way. Um, and you will speak about towards autonomous plant production using free convolutionary neural network. <laughs> okay, uh, Peter Christians, we are we looking forward to your presentation. So I use this mic. So um, okay. So uh, sight and the ability to see uh, it's a very basic uh, ability of humans. Uh, actually, very very unintelligent people still have have exceptionally and incredible visual capabilities. They will, within a blink of a second, they able to spot objects in the scene. Right now I can spot all the humans, I can spot the structure of the room. And I might even be noticing if you're looking at your laptop instead of me, or if you're really not interested. So, but for a computer to have the same visual uh, capabilities, it's very difficult. And traditionally it has been almost impossible. Uh, however, they think deep learning methods and especially something called convolutional neural networks they are able to do image classification meaning that they are able to to recognize the most dominant object in the image and just lately last year we were able to recognize objects uh, better or as good as human or recognize the most dominant object in an image better or as good as human so that's quite impressive in this talk um, I'm going to show some of the potential for this in agriculture um, and specifically I'm doing something called semantic segmentation which is uh, basically classifying every single pixel in an image. So classifying it on an object type. And so what could that be used for? Uh, well it could be used in autonomous machines that I will describe now. And uh, this is the part of the same project. Uh, so we have our traditional tractors and also we have this uh, robot uh, machine. So we are, what the goal of today is to have these drive autonomously. Uh, traditionally if we have tractors, they are able to, to drive and navigate uh, more precise and efficiently than a farmer, a traditional uh, operator. Um, so, but still, uh, when we want to do this, there still needs to be an operator, making sure of the safety, making sure that the, robot, the tractor or the robot is not hitting any animals, harming any humans, uh, and secondly, also to make sure that the tractor is not uh, harmed by the environment. So the goal is no human intervention and doing uh, autonomous vehicles. And basically, there's in order to make this happen, well, there's two goals. The first goal is that we need to perceive the environment, have sensors uh, recognize what kind of ob obstacles are there in the scene. And secondly, based on these perceptions, well, we need to navigate and avoid obstacles. And a perception I've built, and you know, from self-driving cars, there are a lot of different ways of perceiving the environment. And in the SAFE project, well, we also investigate a lot of different uh, types of sensors. I might hi highlight the one in the top of the corner, a Velodyne lighter. It's uh, used by Google Car and it has exceptional good uh, perception capabilities. It's very good at detecting obstacles, also at far range, under various conditions. Um, however, it's really expensive. It's uh, 35 euros, 35,000 euros for such a sensor. So, and also in, in, a, in a grass field or in a crop, well, we might have obstacles or animals or fallen humans that uh, doesn't protrude the crop surface. So there will also be a problem for that sensor even though it works really good for autonomous cars. So what we're investigating is just a regular TV camera. The advantage for this is that it's very cheap, however the big problem is that it has limited perception capabilities. And that's a big issue for this sensor. Um, traditionally, well, there is, you use object detection algorithms. So it's a bit hard to see this, I think. Um, well, that's basically just uh, detecting obstacles with a bounding box. That's what they also, Mobileye is doing on the Tesla model. They're using just bounding box object detection. And we've also tried doing that. This is a cute video with these small kids going around. 
I don't know if you can see that green bounty box, but most of these kits are detected using a state-of-the-art pedestrian detector. However, as you just saw, maybe there was a kid who fell, and suddenly when the kid fell, it wasn't able to detect that human. So it has limited capacity, it's only, it's only, it can only train for detecting upright pedestrians, um, and also it's, it cannot recognize other obstacles as trees or an animal or stuff like this. So we might go to deep learning, uh, where we can have multiple object detection, and they're all uh, able to detect them in a range of different postures. This is also a really incredible example where it's able to detect a human even though it's seen from the back uh, of the person, the guy, the um, But in the, in the context of agriculture, we're not only interested in, in objects that we can put a nice bounding box around. We're also interested in, for example, the road on, on, on the left on the, on the image. We might also be interested in what is field. What about the shell belt? It's not just a bounding box. So we believe, so actually bounding box is not that great for such a case. So now we will finally go to semantic segmentation where we have an input image and basically the goal of that algorithm is to classify every single pixel as an object type. So in this case, well, it's able to take the vehicle from the person and the horse and stuff like this. And the algorithm I'm going to use today for this uh, is this called the uh, fully convolutional network for semantic segmentation. So I haven't invented this, I'm just using stuff out there. Um, but it's just to show the, the potential of these algorithms. Lately, there's just in 2016, just a few months ago, there's a new model called Dive Introduce. It's a simple model and has, has better performance. So there's a lot of stuff, stuff happening in this field. Um, so I'm just going to try to describe the, the method in, in some way, uh, a conceptual way. So in normal, normally convolutional neural networks is used for image classification. So in this case, we just have two classes. There's one image with a face and one with a not face. Only two classes. And traditionally, well, we will have a prediction with two value vectors, saying, is this a face or is this not a face? Uh, for the first case, we might say that there's not a face there, and that's what I, luckily uh, what our algorithm also is saying in this case. And in the second case, with the face, where we might show there's a face. Um, and then to just describe that we use convolutional, uh, the model of this convolutional neural network consists of convolutional layers. Basically, we provide some features that we put into our fully connected layers, which is actually just normal uh, neural networks. Then we can put it into classification there, and then we have the whole, uh, yeah, the whole pipeline. The problem with this is that we need fixed images, fixed size images, 200 by 27 by 227, and we get two value vectors out on the right. On the, yeah, on the right side. So now we want to do fully convolutional, so we'll be able to handle uh, full or arbitrary sized images, images that are bigger than 200 by, by 227 by 227, and then we want a heat map like this uh, on this side. So in this case, well, we have one heat map for saying when there's a face, and we have a heat map for saying that when there's not a face. And then we can basically, without doing any new retraining, we can directly use the model from above, take the convolutions, convert, take the same weights, but convert these uh, fully connected to convolutional layers, and also convert the classification figure. And then we have the pipeline, and we can provide these heat maps. So we're getting close to having semantic segmentation, pixelized classification. And you can imagine if you had 10 paths, well, you would have 10 feature maps at this position. Uh, however, we need to get uh, uh, get, have the original dimension of the image. So we do, as before, we take the convolution, however, this part, the classification layer, we insert a one by one convolution, prediction of convolution, and we add a deconvolutional layer. And basically, what deconvolution layer is just an upsampling of the, of the prediction. So suddenly, we are in, uh, we are in goal having this similar output images as they do. Um, so, what about the data? So, uh, providing uh, per pixels annotation is uh, a very heavy task uh, of providing. Uh, luckily, there's something called Pascal Buck, and it's around 10,000 images where they have marked objects. So, we have uh, humans and like the motorcycles marked in the image. But in agriculture, we're interested in having, for example, sky or shelter built trees and grass and ground detected. 
but luckily some guys used uh, uh, six guys used three months doing full uh, whole scene annotations. And uh, the paper I'm, I'm using, full convolutional networks by SSS or semantics in annotation, well they use the 59 most frequent classes. In an agricult agricultural context, well we wouldn't need uh, 59 different classes. So we're grouping all animals in an animal class, we are grouping all different obstacles in an optical class, and so forth. And suddenly we are able to take these 59 different classes and map them to 10 agriculture specific classes. And if you just have a little example, uh, these two kids, uh, then you can see the result uh, of the network. So, yeah, the field is uh, detected, that's the red, the, the, the dark. Area. The blue is the people, the pink is the ground, uh, the sort of blue, uh, like that. <laughs> the blue in the top corner, that's difficult, and then we also have that bucket that is unknown or obstacle. So, the, the goal is now to apply this to see how well it generalizes to an agricultural context. To do this, we, we just did a simple annotation of 10 images. Five in a burst, field case, and five in a row crop. So this is how the images look like. And for the grass case, we, we saw that it was quite impressive, or what I thought was quite impressive, we were able to generalize for the pixel classification accuracy of 95%. For the row crop, it's not that good. And I'll try to show you this in a demo. So this is from an actual grass mowing uh, use case. Uh, the tractor is actually right now doing uh, grass mowing. Um, and you can see how it detects the field, the tractor, the shelter belt, uh, the house is partly detected as house and an obstacle, and then the sky as well. Uh, unfortunately, there's no, we're not detecting the humans here. But as we get closer, it will detect it as an animal. And then on the left, you see a sort of a pedestrian detector and also a deep learning algorithm for object detection. And as we get closer, well, we'll start to have a people detected. Uh, I also just forward this and you see how the road is also detected when the shelter built and the person is not detected yet but by the object detection algorithms. And yeah. So I'll just complete this. And it's also able to detect this barrel as it's a bit fun with the unknown uh, obstacle. And then for the row crop case, well, it's not perfect. And uh, for a row crop, well, there's no row crop uh, class in the, the context, uh, as well as context data set, so we're hard representing this. However, it's largely, this is one of the examples where everything is, is, is all messed up. But it is mostly detected as ground row. Uh, the top part of the image, well, it's detected as shelter belt. Uh, as field and shelter belt, you might imagine why it's detected as field. It looks like the grass, it looks like a grass uh, section, so on. Uh, the human is detected as a vehicle, okay, uh, and these barrels are also detected. This area is all messy with the obstacle, unknown, building, and sky. So it, it breaks down if, if there's like an unknown class something that we chose to show to this. Um, yeah, concluding remarks. Um, yeah, it's, it breaks down for the row crop uh, case. Uh, it requires state of the art GPU. Uh, the algorithms I just showed you is uh, four birds, roughly four birds, using a Titan X uh, state of the art GPU. So it's not uh, fully real time. However, you can, you can make a smaller model. You can even, even compress the model and get faster, uh, faster models. The strong thing about this method is that, at least in the aspect of computer vision, is that we are taking this model and training on a completely di different data set as a context, and then we're using it in, in agriculture. So they are totally uncoded, they are fully uncoded these two data sets. So that's quite impressive that it's able to deliver these kind of results. Um, and also, uh, in using this procedure, well, we avoid having this comprehensive task of doing per pixel annotation in 10,000 of images. Um, yeah, and, and basically why I'm I wrote this work and why I'm presenting to you today is just 
I haven't done anything amazing, I'm just trying to show you how amazing these uh, deep learning and semantics implementations are being sound. So that, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting uh, presentation. And yes, now we have some questions, perhaps. <clears throat> what, uh, yes? So uh, you say the big advantage here is that it, it wasn't trained on a very specific case, which is good for agriculture because we have widely different environments and crops and that. But would there be a chance that you could improve it by training maybe in, in certain crops like a normal Danish wheat field and get it a little better and still have it able to deep, deep learn in a slightly different field or in barley or something else? Yeah. That's definitely a point. That's definitely a point. So ultimately, if think that this is like the solution for having autonomous vehicles, we would also record data of various fields and combine, combine that. And I, I imagine that it would still generalize to other fields as well. But that would definitely help, I think. And also completely retraining the model to these agricultural specific models is also something that is in the pipeline that we're going to do. Yeah. Next question. <clears throat> As I understand correct, you can, uh, if this uh, technique works, you can replace all different uh, uh, sensors with this one uh, camera. Is that the vision? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's the vision. Uh, and, and we're not there yet. It has, uh, as you saw, it has difficulties in detecting objects that are far away. So when you're reaching uh, high speeds, as in, in agriculture, also especially in the car, in our small industry, well, I think we recognize too, too late. Yeah. And, and, and actually, we, we cannot compete with a, with a real blind light in, in this sense, yeah. at least not with the perception capabilities. Okay, nothing called the Google. Uh, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think they, they also will use this for. Yeah, real blind, and then a TV camera is very good for classifying, not just detecting obstacles. Detecting obstacles like a little dying light is, is very good. But for classifying or recognizing what kind of object is it? Is it just a bag, uh, uh, just a paper bag on the road, or is it actually uh, a small animal? That's very hard for a real blind system to, to distinguish these two. Thank you.